so you still want to coach in the NBA one day? I don't know. I don't know about that. You know, I don't, if you're not going to take the Lakers job, then what job are you going to take? As I understand it, you've also said recently, you could never be an NBA coach because they don't do shit. <laughs> <laughs> Who did I say that to? Even like last year, he'd say like, I'm a coach, I coach. He's like, you know, NBA is not coaching. It's like, you know, he, like I run this, I run it. He talks and I'm just like, yeah, 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 yep. Yep, you're a college coach. Because who the hell would ever think that this would have came up? Exercises like the, the Lakers situation was something really good for me to go through um, in a very public way to really evaluate what type of coach you want to be. I love being a part of like that, the, this uh, transformation for the last point in a young man's life where you could really have a big impact on, on how their life is going to play out, like what the man becomes. Um, that to me was what I realized that I love about being a college coach that you don't get to do as, a, as an NBA coach because that's not the relationship there. What do you think made you realize that? I, I think uh, the, the meeting I had with the players here before I got on a plane to go out there. It was a rough meeting. That was a rough you, meeting. Least, yeah. That was a rough meeting. What do you remember from that? The faces the faces, because it all broke on social in the morning for them uh, at, at, a, at a really early time before we could get the group together. And I couldn't just believe that I seen Coach could possibly leave, so I came back for Coach. Like, I don't know what to do if he leaves, so I started stressing. I was stressful for three, four days. For them, I explained this was the equivalent of, of the NBA wanting them as a top five pick or the number one pick in their draft. Hey, guys, I'm going to consider it. Uh, that's what I would tell you to do. What most stands out to you from the visit? It felt yucky because we have, it's like you're cheating on your family. You know, it's like you, like, like uh, it, felt, it felt wrong, but felt so right. When he went out there uh, to California and he had his family with him and they showed him around and they're talking about Magic Johnson and Kareem and Kobe and all these great legends that have been there. Um, it's humbling, I'm sure. I'm sitting at the table and I was like, you know, looking at the colors and the Laker sign, and you're just like, wow, this is numbing. You know, it's amazing. And then you're seeing all the people you only see on TV. And it was just, it was the, the I just kept crying because I was so, like, I just couldn't believe that, like, my husband was wanted for this job, you it, know, like. It almost touches you a little bit now, thinking of it. Oh my, I, I, I still, I like, the fact that he climbed his way from where we were to hear that, like the Lakers won him, holy God. I felt like it was justified and deserved, you know? I kind of expected something like that after last year and it didn't happen after the first NCAA tournament championship. So I was happy for him because I think that it was really validating to a degree. There's no sure thing throughout the entire process, but it definitely felt like a possibility. And, you know, as it went on, you know, it just kind of got a little more unclear about what was going to happen. And so you guys get back. You, you don't know what you're going to do. No at that idea. Point. We were so torn. I mean, honestly, people don't believe that. It, it was like we had no idea what we were doing. We come back. It went the same exact way Wagner went when we went to Rhode Island and Rhode Island went when we went here. Um, it's excruciating. And it's, it was back and forth. And when I got you on. You made the jump, both of those. We did. Yeah. Which was, which, which I really thought we were. Um, oh, you did? I did. Just when we thought we made up our mind, he'd get another text from somebody he respected and, you know, kind of was, you know, asking advice from. And then it was like split. But no, we had, it went back and forth. And coming, even on the plane, my oldest son was so against it. And on the plane ride home, he was so for it. It's never just one thing. That's why I never could understand when people, um, when people see you struggling with, with like really hard decisions or of what direction you want to go with your life. Um, when you're a father or a husband or a leader of an organization, like the amount of lives that are impacted by the choices you make and how people could not understand publicly why it was such a hard decision, like, it blew my mind. We got all the facts and, you know, everything was considered. Um, we were able to kind of take a step back, look at everything, and um, kind of have that conversation of just kind of what to do, what was best. And yeah, I think that was probably, it was, it was a good bonding moment too. People couldn't understand too the paradox of like, 
yeah, before you go to bed, before you're making the biggest decision uh, that you could ever make in your life, hey, Andrea, one, two, three, shoot. You know, that was like the new technology version of like rock, paper, scissors. Explain that with the text. We have all the information, one, two, three, shoot. Tell us what you think. You know, I was relieved when we, when we had the stay. You know, like seeing that stay on her screen quick and, and then the next day when we woke up, perfect, it's over. He knew what I wanted to do, but I would do, I would do whatever he wanted to do. We just are still in this amazing, you know, like feeling of just what we did here and it, it's a dream and then you're gonna, you're gonna jump and you're gonna leap and go somewhere else. You know, like, I don't know. I know that's how it goes, but sometimes it's just not right. Ultimately, he came back from LA and um, I got myself in some trouble. We went to a concert that night, went to oh, a Billy, Billy Joel, Joel concert. That was planned months in advance, but there was something about being in, in the garden and, and hearing those songs that I think probably tapped into you know, his Northeast experience, his tri-state area love, and uh, you know, maybe that played a little bit of a role. But I think ultimately, you know, he feels most comfortable here and in the college game, and I know we're excited about this year. That uh, meeting uh, that he had with the team where he told everybody, take me through no. <laughs> uh, how that went. He, he walks in and he starts questioning all of us, like, why should I stay at UConn? What does UConn mean to you? What are you guys gonna do for the team this year to convince me to stay? And we start listing reasons, like we're here to win, we wanna compete, we wanna best, be the best team in the country again. Are you like, what the hell, I just won two yeah, national that's what, I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm saying, like, coach, just give us the answer, come on now. Right. And, and then, um, you know, he, he, re he re reiterated his reasons about why it's such a good job, which kind of scared me again, but, you know, he trusted us. And then he brought in his wife too after, and, you know, she also said that, like, she loves UConn so much, which made, which made me happy and made the rest of the guys happy. I never thought he would go. Really? I did not. Okay, why not? I just know how much he loves his family. I know how much he's, um, you know, entrenched himself with the UConn community and how, how um, passionate he is about that. Um, I just didn't see him packing up and moving across the country. Um, I just didn't see it. I mean, in fairness, that job seems a little easier than this job. I mean, this job's now 24-7 with, and, you know, NIL transfer portal recruiting. Yeah. Whatever. I mean, it's, it's more demanding in a sense that, like, I'm the GM. I pick the players. I have to recruit the players. I hire my own staff. Obviously, I decide when, when planes take off. And uh, so every aspect of the program here, you control. Um, not and necessarily the case. Not necessarily there. the case in the NBA. And, and I feel like that my, where I'm at my best as a coach is the atmosphere that I create in practice. I believe that that gives us a competitive advantage over the people that we play against. Um, it's like uh, hell week for SEALs or something. But if I can't replicate that in the NBA, it takes one of the things that gives me the competitive advantage in college away from me because you can't practice in the NBA like that because you don't play 82 games and you could barely even have practice time. And are you going to send LeBron on suicide? <laughs> <laughs> Stairs, you know, AD, uh, the, the day after back-to-backs. And uh, th that's what I think you, you have self-awareness.